Brian Foster on my live YouTube stream. I want to welcome everyone to our program today. I will show this up here. It is a wonder in the spirit land. Part one, Days of Darkness, chapter four, the Brotherhood of Hope. Now, this we started this a couple of weeks ago, and it is by the spirit Francesco, who was a brilliant person, but he lived kind of a desolate life. He's very intellectual. He was more, you know, he kind of grew up in the Catholic Church, rejected it because of the hypocrisy, quite understandable of what he saw during those days. And he he fell in love with a woman who just, I mean, he, he felt he didn't deserve her. And now, he, of course, he died early, and of course, she still loves him and trying to help him from the other side. And her brother, who had died before her, had asked him to please leave her, let her carry on with her life. But then he gave her that, that option. She said no. But then he said, at least be gone from her for like 90 days. And so he met a person and said, why don't you follow me to the Brotherhood of Hope? He was a very religious person. He's trying, he's starting to try to find his path to the light. And it's a, a excellent book. So be, but before I begin, chapter four, the Brotherhood of Hope, please subscribe, hit the bell and hit the like button. It will help you with the algorithm, the algorithm, I should say. And we will get more people exposed to spiritism and what is happening on the other side of the veil. Because I tell you, the more you understand the spirit world, you really begin to understand your own world. You begin to understand what is happening to you and why it's happening. Let's carry on and, and find out. In the spirit world, there are many strange places, many wondrous sites, and many organizations for helping repentant souls. But I have never seen anything more strange in its way than this home of help conducted by the Brotherhood of Hope, to which I was now conducted. In the, in the then feeble condition of my spiritual faculties, I was unable to see what the place was like. I was almost like one who was deaf, dumb, and blind. When I was with others, I could scarcely see or hear them or make them hear me, although I could see a little. It was more as though I was in a perfectly dark room with only one small feeble glimmer of light to show me where I went. On the earth plane, I had not felt this so much, for though all was darkness, I could both see and hear enough to be conscious of those near me. It was in ascending even to the little distance at which this place was above the earth that I felt the absence of all but the most material development of my spirit. So let's talk about the Brotherhood of Hope, this very quickly. So here's the Brotherhood of Hope. You go, what's this? Well, I there's also in other spirits book talking about other organizations that help spirits. And one of them uh, was in this great book, Memoirs of a Suicide, the organization of, of Mary. Mary of Nazareth, the mother of, of Jesus. So she had this whole hospital campus like like area to to help people who committed suicides. And this was and of course, so it's not heaven isn't just one organization all controlled by Jesus. It, it's a, it's an organization that has got many like what we call NGOs, non-government organizations. The mother, the Mary of Nazareth organization is one. There's many, many more that you can read about as you read spiritual literature. So I'll carry on. That time of darkness was so awful to me that even now I scarce like to recall it. I so love the sunshine and the light. I came from a land where all is sunshine and brightness where the colors are so rich, the sky so clear, the flowers and the scenery so beautiful. And so I love light and warmth and melody. And here as elsewhere, elsewhere since my death, I had found only darkness and coldness and gloom, an appalling and shrouding gloom that wrapped me round like a mantle of night from which I could in no way free myself. And this awful gloom crushed my spirit as nothing else could have done. I had been so proud and haughty on earth. I came of a race that knew not what, what it was to bow before anyone. In my veins ran the blood of haughty nobles. Though my mother, I was allied to the great ones of the earth whose ambitions had moved kingdoms to their will 
And now the lowest, humblest, poorest beggar of my native streets was greater, happier than I, for at least he had the sunshine and the free air, and I was the lowest, most degraded prisoner in the dungeon cell. So here's, here's poor Francesco, who had lost most of his senses as far as he couldn't see anything, he could barely get people to listen to him, he could barely hear what they were saying. He was not in good shape. And the, so, but he clung on to the visions of his, uh, his love who was still on earth. I'll keep reading. Had it not been for my one star of hope, that's his, his love, my angel of light and the hope she had given me through her love, I must have sunk into the apathy of despair. But when I thought of her waiting as she had vowed, she would do all her life for me. When I recalled her sweet and tender smile, and the loving words she had spoken to me, my heart and my courage revived again, and I strove to endure, to be patient, to be strong, and I had need of all to help me, for from now began a period of suffering and conflict. I shall in vain seek to make anyone fully realize. The place where I was now, I could barely see in all its details. It was like a huge prison, dim and misty in its outlines. Later on, I saw it was a great building of dark gray stone, as solid to my eyes as earthly stone, with many long passages, some long, large halls or rooms, but mostly composed of innumerable little cells with scarcely any light and only the barest of furniture. Each spirit all had only what he had earned by his earthly life, and some had nothing but the little couch whereupon they lay and suffered. For all suffered there. It was the house of sorrow. Yet it was also a house of hope, for all there were striving upwards to the light, and for each had begun the time of hope. Each had his foot planted upon the lowest rung of the ladder of hope, by which he should in time mount even to heaven itself. In my own little cell there was but my bed, a table, and a chair, nothing more. I spent my time in resting or meditating in my cell, and going with those who, like myself, soon grew strong enough to hear the lectures which were delivered to us in the great hall. Very impressive those lectures were, told in the form of a story, but always so as to bring home to the mind of each of us those things wherein we had done wrong. Now let me stop there for a second. So here he is in this house of hope. Of course he called it like the house of sorrow because everyone is just recovering from being on the lower zone or below and being in great distress and so what what was happening to them well they were given a place they're given their own space they're given a, a rest they're given a place for meditation and they were told stories this should bring back to us really the importance the spirit world places on our free will our freedom now as i described reincarnation and karma and what is happening, you know, how you have to go through trials that are predestined. One could think like, what are you talking about freedom? We have to go through these trials. Like we, you know, these are either planned for us if we were in the lower zone or below, or if we were in heaven, we plan them with help with our spirit as mentors. But we, we you know, we're, we're, we kind of have to go with the program when we're here on earth. But when you're in the spirit world, you really have even more of your free will. It's, you don't have a planned series of of events you're kind of guided more than you know but still you don't have a plan to event so you have free will so all they're trying to do is say here's here's information on the table do you want to hear it you can leave anytime you want you can go back in the lower zone you can go back into the dark abyss and be people who with who you were like i mean so this is all it's all very motivational and there is a lot of freedom but the freedom in order to really enjoy your freedom you must be study and have some self-discipline let's carry on great pains were taken to make us understand from the point of view of an impartial spectator the full consequences to ourselves and others of each of our actions and where we had for our own selfish gratifications wrong and drag down another soul so many things which we had done because all men did them are because we thought that we as men had the right to do them, were now shown to us from the other side of the picture, and from those who had in a measure been our victims. 
are where we personally were not directly responsible for their fall, the victims of a social system invented and upheld to gratify us in our selfish passions. I cannot more fully describe these lectures, but those amongst you who know what are the corruptions of the great cities of earth will easily supply for yourselves the subjects from such lectures, such pictures of ourselves as we were, stripped of all the social disguises of earth life, we could but return in shame and sorrow part to ourselves to reflect over our past and to strive to atone for it in our future. And so I've seen this before too. Anything he's describing where these people, they did things because they could, right? Um, I was at this one meeting, meeting where this woman came and she, you know, went through another medium and taught for another medium and, and said that her husband was cruel to her. He burned her face with an iron. He locked her up. So was, how could someone who said he loved me? How could someone do that? And then later on, he came and went through a medium and says, I am so sorry. I, you know, back in those days, I, I thought a man owned a woman and I just want her forgiveness. She could not forgive him. One can understand that, but we should try to forgive everyone no matter how cruel they were to us, because they will go through their own karma. He will go through his own in own karma. You don't ever have to extract revenge on something. You don't have to teach anybody anything. The spirit world will take everyone's everyone's bad karma and they will say, okay, what have you done? Now, what do you need to learn not to do this again? And then something will happen to that person, which will be, they will be on the other side of what they did to someone else. It's kind of the opposite of the golden rule. Things are going to be done to you as you have done to others. So, let me carry on. And in this, there was great help given to us. For with the error and its consequences, we are always shown the way to correct and overcome the evil desire in ourselves. And how we might atone for our own sins by timely efforts to save another from the evil into which we had fallen. All the lessons being intended to fit us for the next stage of our progression in which we would be sent back to earth to help unseen and unknown mortals who were struggling with earth's temptations. And of course, I like to also say he uses the word uh, sin. And in spiritism, we don't like to use the word you committed a sin, it's, you committed a wrong. Sins can be somewhat subjective, right? Different people think different things are sins. Not that I believe in moral, uh, you know, in, in um, the fact that everything is, is can be moral, right? Moral rel relativity is the words I'm looking for. No, there are absolutely things you cannot do. But again, we want to say those are wrongs because sin kind of carries some things for people. And there's also, you know, sins of things that we don't think so anymore. Like spiritism, there's nothing wrong with homosexuality or two people of whatever genders wishing to marry. In fact, even that says in the spirits book, in the, in the 1850s, when they asked, okay, you know, what's the definition of marriage? And the definition of marriage is two spirits who love each other. They didn't say male or female. And they said, okay, well, can a spirit come back as male or female? I said, either one. It's up to them. It's not important. That probably is important to some people. But um, it is, it shows you how uh, there's many things that I think in, in, during the time of Jesus is that he would have been even more open and inclusive but the culture wasn't ready for that yet. And they would never accept it, anything he said. You can only go so far when you're teaching someone. You can't teach algebra to a second grade. You can only make a small evolution. So, and in this, there was great help given to us for the error and its consequences. We were always shown the way to correct and overcome the evil desire in ourselves and how we might atone for our own sins by time we ever to save another. Okay, I said that already. So when we were not attending the lectures, we were free to go where we might wish. That is, such of us were strong enough to move about freely. Some who have left their friends on earth would go to visit them. That, unseen themselves, they might yet see those they loved. We were always warned, however, not to linger in the temptations of the earth plane, since many of us would find it difficult to resist them. Or that does happen. Those who were strongest amongst us and who possessed the needful qualities and the desire to use them were employed in magnetizing those who were the weakest and who, by reason of the excessive dissipations of their earthly lives, 
were in such terrible conditions of exhaustion and suffering that the only thing which could be done with them was to allow them to lie helpless in their cells while others gave them a little relief by magnetizing them. Now, magnetize. Oh, here. He's going to describe it, so I won't, I won't carry on. And here I must describe your very wonderful system of healing those poor spirits, which was practiced in this house of hope. Some advanced spirits whose natural desires and tastes made them doctors and healers, with the help of other spirits of different degrees of advancement under them, would attend upon those poorest and most suffering ones, where indeed all were sufferers, and by means of magnetism and the use of other powers which they could control, they would put these poor spirits into temporary forgetfulness of their pain, and though they awoke again to renew all their sufferings, yet in these intervals the spirits gained strength and and insensibly grew more <clears throat> insensibly grew more able to endure it till at last their sufferings were mitigated with time and the growing and development of the spirit and body and they in turn would when it was fit to do so be employed to make ties others who were still suffering now let me describe a little bit more than he did so in fact i even had a class on 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 passes what they call it so in, in spirit places you go in there, go to a spirit center. You'll have a talk for half hour, an hour on some topic. And then they will say, okay, come into this room and we'll give passes to those who want them. When they give passes, you'll, you'll go in a line and then you'll there'll be chairs around to have a darkest room. You'll sit down and there'll be some uh, person in front of you. And all they will do is they will put their hands up, they're up and down around you, maybe around your head, so forth. and but what in reality is happening is a spirit will be behind them. They will be using, utilizing universal fluid. Universal fluid is the building block of everything. The building block of the spirit universe, the building block of the physical universe, everything, all molecules, everything's made out of universal fluid. They'll take a universal fluid and they'll use the body of the medium who's giving the passes to modify it to fit what is needed by that person receiving the passes. It will help reharmonize, de-stress certain organs. And you, I, I love having passes. I, I can feel it. In fact, I've given passes and I can feel the electricity. I can just feel it. The power flow through my arms. It's a wonderful feeling. Um, so, and it does, it does help. At least it helps me. I have nothing quantifiable to say how it helped me, but I, I did feel better. You know, people could say it's in my mind, which, well, our mind does affect us, but it really does help, in my opinion. So, let me carry on. It is impossible for me to give you a very clear picture of this place and those in it, for although the resemblance to an earthly hospital was very great, there were many little points in which it resembled nothing which you have yet on earth. Though as knowledge on earth advances, the resemblance will become closer. All was so dark in this place because the unfortunate spirits who had dwelt there had none of the brightness of happy spirits to give into the atmosphere. And it is the state of the spirit itself in the spiritual world that makes the lightness or darkness of its surroundings very true. So he's already learning the truth. And as I said before, as you go higher in heaven, it becomes brighter and brighter. And that's why people like him can't go into higher regions because it would just blind him and make them feel very uncomfortable. He can only go as high as he feels comfortable. And of course, and he said, and he says that lightness or darkness is the state of the spirit. As you get higher and higher, you are you reflect more of the lightness of God's love, and the whole atmosphere becomes lighter. It becomes natural to you. It's not like you're in this bright white light all the time. It's, it becomes just natural, brighter than on earth, where most spirits said that things are brighter and more clear. But it doesn't ever become uncomfortable when you are used to that level. The sense of darkness was almost due to the due to the total blindness of those poor spirits, whose spiritual senses never having been developed on earth, made them alike insensible to all around them, just as those born on earth in a state of blindness, deafness and dumbness would be unconscious of the things which were apparent to those fully endowed with senses. In visiting the atmosphere of the earthly plane, which was a degree more suited to their state of development, these poor spirits would still be in darkness, though it would not be so complete and they would possess the power of seeing those beings like themselves with whom they could come into direct contact. And also such mortals as were in sufficiently low spiritual degree of development. 
the higher and more spiritualized mortals, and still more the disembodied spirits in advance of them, would only be very dimly discernible or even totally invisible. The working brothers of hope, as they were called, were each provided with a tiny little light like a star whose rays illuminated the darkness of the cells they visited and carried the light of hope wherever the brothers went. I myself at first was so great a sufferer that I used simply to lie in my cell in a state of almost apathetic misery, watching for the spark to come glimmering down the long corridor to my door and wondering how long it would be in earth time ere it would come again. But it was not long that I lay there thus utterly prostrate. Unlike many of the poor spirits who had added a love of drink to their other vices, my mind was too clear and my desire to improve too strong to leave me long inactive. And as soon as I found myself able to move again, I petitioned to be allowed to do something, however humble, which might be of use. Now, let's talk about two things. When he said, unlike others, we had a drink. So again, as I've said this before, if you're an addict of some sort, alcohol or whatever it is, you still feel addicted because it's in your mind. Your mind is, I still want alcohol or I still want whatever drug. And that's why they have to have magnetic passes. And no, you don't really. Until finally their mind says, oh, yes, I don't. But it's still very strong within them. The other thing he said is, you ask for something to do. That is exactly what, that's exactly what the spirit world wants of us. They want us to say, I, I want to be of use. I want to be of service. You, you, they really, they really are appreciate intellectually curious and hardworking people, just like anyone else who wants to hire someone. So, um, so I found myself able to move again, so he wanted something to do. I was therefore, as being myself possessed of strong magnetic powers, set to help an unfortunate young man who was utterly unable to move and who used to lie moaning and sighing all the time. Poor fellow, he was only 30 years old when he left the earth body. But in his short life, he had contrived to plunge in such dissipations that he had prematurely killed himself. It was now suffering such agonies from the reaction upon the spirit of those powers he had abused that it was often more than I could bear to witness them. My task was to make Susan passes over him, by which means he would obtain, obtain a little relief. Till a stated time, a more advanced spirit than myself would come in and put him in a state of unconsciousness. And all this time, I myself suffering of keenly, both in mind and in my spirit body. For in the lower spheres, the spirit is conscious of bodily sufferings. As it grows more advanced, the suffering becomes more purely mental, the less material envelope of the higher spirits, making them at least, at last, insensible to anything like material pain. Now, again, he, he's right he, in one point that he, in the lower spirit, is more is more matter than energy. And as you go higher, you're more energy than matter. But again, still, the reason you have more suffering is because you're more matter per se, is you're not as mentally disciplined. I carry on. As my strength grew, so did my desires revive and caused me so much torment that I was often tempted to do what many poor spirits did, go back to earth in search of the means to satisfy them through the material bodies of those yet on earth. So again, what happens is, let's say there's you're in a bar and people are drinking. Well, the spirits around you, they'll actually kind of go into your body. And then as you drink, they will feel the effects of alcohol and it will give them this temporary re relief. And they'll, any other type of addiction or type of pleasure, so let you think of that, that's what they, they can do. My bodily sufferings grew very great for the strength I'd been so proud of and had used do so bad a purpose, maybe suffer more than those who had been weak. As the muscles of an athlete who had used them to excess began after time to contract and cause him excruciating pain, so those powers and that strength which I had abused in my earthly life now began. Though it's inevitable reaction of my spirit body to cause me the most intense suffering. And then as I grew stronger and stronger and able to enjoy what had seemed enjoyment in my earth life, the desire for those pleasures grew and grew till I could scarce refrain from returning to the earth plane there to enjoy through the organisms of those yet in the flesh, whose sordid lives and low desires placed them on a level with the spirits of the earth plane, those pleasures of the senses which had been still so great a temptation for us. Many and many of those who were in the house of hope with me would yield to the temptation and go back for a time to haunt the earth. 
whence they would return after a longer or shorter period, exhausted and degraded, even below their former state. All were free to go or stay as they desired. All could return when they wished. For the doors of Hope's castle were never shut upon anyone, however unthankful or unworthy they may be. And I've often wondered at the infinite patience and tenderness, which were ever shown for our weaknesses and our sins. It was indeed only possible to pity those poor unfortunates who had made such utter slaves of themselves for their base desires that they could not resist them and were drawn back time after time to the last. Satiated and exhausted, they could move no more and were like the unfortunate young man whom I tended. Again, you'll see, inexhaustible patience. Imagine that we have gone through life after life and failed in life after life after life. And yet, Jesus still loves us. His minister still loves us. The spirits look down upon us and they still love us, even though it's like a, a child, right? Every decision they make is most likely the wrong decision, but of course you still love that child. You cry a little bit, you got some tears, you go, oh my heavens. Yet you know that someday, hopefully, they will grow and become responsible adults. The same thing is the way the spirit world looks at us. They just hope that someday, through our own motivation, our own willpower, our own hard work and study, we too shall become responsible spirits. Now, what do I mean? What do I mean by responsible spirits? What I mean is by a, a productive spirit, a spirit who's actually there helping more than they're having people help them, right? And there are many spirits who help a lot around the earth, but you really become a productive spirit where you're helping guide whole earths and races and cultures and plants and minerals and animals when you're actually above the top level of heaven that around the earth. Each planet has their own levels of multiple levels of heaven around it. And each of those levels of heaven where people go through colleges, they go through skills, schools, lessons. They have missions on that planet that are associated with like we do on earth. And But once you graduate that, then you're really part of a greater productive spirit society. And of course, here we on earth right now, most of us, myself included, we're barely, we'll make it to that first level of heaven. We have a long ways to go. We'll be associated with Earth or some other planet, hopefully more advanced, at some day that we will keep learning. So, I'll carry on. For myself, I might also have yielded to the temptation had not been for the thoughts of my pure love and the hope she had given me, the pure desire she had inspired, and I at least could not condemn these poor erring souls with no such blessings granted them. I went to earth very often, but it was to where my beloved one dwelt, and her love drew me to her ever, sighed and away from all temptations into the pure atmosphere of her house, and though I could never approach near enough to touch her by reason of this icy invisible wall which I have described, of course I said, you could never touch her. And that was something the other spirit set up about, about so he could not do that. He was he was, did not deserve that this time, and she did not deserve it this time. She is so full of love, they didn't want her to sacrifice too much of herself for this, for Francesco. Very logical. I used to stand outside of it, looking at her as she sat and worked or read or slept. When I was there, she would always be in a dim way conscious of my presence and would whisper my name or turn to where I was with one of her sad, sweet smiles that I would carry away the recollection and, uh, and comfort myself in my lonely hours. She looked so sad, so very sad, my poor love and so pale and delicate, it made my heart ache even while it comforted me to see her. I could tell that in spite of all her efforts to be brave and patient and to hope, the strain was almost too much at this time. And there were family troubles and the doubts and fears suggested by the strangeness of her intercourse with the world of spirits. At times she would wonder if it were not all a wild delusion. Who could blame her? A dream from which she would awake to find that there was, after all, no communication between the dead and the living, no means by which she could reach me again, and then a dull despair would seize upon her and upon me also, as I stood beside her and read her feeling, helpless and powerless to make her realize my actual presence beside her, and I would pray to be allowed in some way to make her know that I was there. And I think that's something all of us who are spiritual and who believe in the spirit world 
and of course those who are spiritists too. And any type of religion where we believe in a higher organization. Our culture just says, you know, okay, you can believe in something higher, but that, if you need a crutch, right? It, it, you, it's, there's something wrong with you that you can't believe in the complete materialism of the world. And so we're bombarded with this that, you know, look, okay, you can't prove it. I, and, and, you know, how many times have people comment, well, can you prove that? I said, no. And it's not my job to prove to you. It's your job. And this is the way the spirit world sets us up. It's your job to prove to yourself there's a higher power through your own racial sedation, your own mental strength, your own intelligence to understand there's something beyond you. There is something more important and there is a set of divine laws. There are rights and wrongs that you should follow. You don't murder, you try to be nice, follow the golden rules is the best thing, right? Those are things you should do. And it, and it doesn't mean you can make exceptions if it's gonna make you a large profit, right? Is it say, oh, I can be mean to people, it's gonna make me millions, it's worth it. No, it doesn't. And that is what we all have to realize on our own. And I, as I said before, God could come down, Jesus could come down and say, okay, I'm Jesus, I control this planet, here, look, here, let me demonstrate my power. I can make you do anything I want to. I can create anything I want to with my mind. Okay, I'll see you. Three months later, this, well, that, three months later, we'd be telling ourselves that was a grand illusion because we did not really feel love. You know, Jesus comes say, look, if you want to feel, if you want to be better, you really have to change yourself. You have to love everyone. We, that would just be thrown out. Within three to six months, we would just say, oh, that was an illusion. I, and I don't believe it. Because why? We saw this demonstration, but it didn't change our heart. We are here to change our inner emotions, to change our heart. This is the hardest thing we have to do, is rewire our personalities and our character. And what spirits say, it's much easier to rewire yourself here on earth than here like Francesco is going through a lot of pain of trying to do that while he was in the spirit world. It's tougher. Because the reason we're on earth is that we're, we're here in these bodies so we can be subjected to these stimuli to cause us to do deep introspection and to make fundamental changes. I carry on. When one night when I had watched her sink into a sleep after a weary time of weeping, I who could have wept too in my grief for us both, was suddenly touched upon the shoulder and looking up beheld her guardian spirit who had first helped me speak with her. He asked me if I would be very quiet and self-restrained if he allowed me to kiss her as she slept and I wild with this new joy most eagerly promised. Taking my hand in his, we passed together through the transparent icy wall that was to me so impervious. Bending over her, the guide made some strange motions with his hands, and then taking one of my hands in his for a few moments, he bade me touch her very gently. She was lying quietly asleep, with the tears still on her eyelashes and her sweet lips slightly parted as though she was speaking in her dreams. One hand rested against her cheek, and I took it in mine so gently, so tenderly, not to awaken her. Her hand closed half consciously upon mine, and a look of such joy came into her face that I feared she would awake. But no, the bright spirit, spirit smiled at us both and said, Kiss her now. And I, ah, I stooped over her and touched her at last and gave her her first kiss I'd ever given. I kissed her not once, but a half a dozen times, so passionately that she awoke, and the bright spirit drew me away in haste. She looked around and asked softly, do I dream or was that indeed my beloved one? I answered yes, and she seemed to hear, for she smiled so sweet a smile, all so sweet, again and again she repeated my name softly to herself. Now let's talk about that. So here he is in a spirit, in a different dimension. With the help of a guardian spirit, who kind of opened that icy wall for a bit, somehow communicated to a, a human on the physical plane. How does this work? Okay, first, we have to understand, there's a spirit universe. The physical universe where we're in now is a subset of the, of the spiritual universe. So it's like communicating, if you're like a, 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 a diver and you're just maybe two feet underwater, and you're trying to communicate to someone 50 feet underwater, right? The gravity is heavier, the communication is tougher, you know, and the, it's it's just difficult. Yet it can be done. 
that's what's happening is he's and now did he talk to her where she could he she could hear with her ears no she heard with her mind because your mind is so connected when you're asleep sometimes you roam the spirit world right so her mind your mind is always connected you don't you don't hear that some people they are able to but and people like empaths can feel the emotions coming from people but most of us are totally insensitive like me and so but she could feel and then you know with her mind what he was saying and that's how mediums work right they they you know they will they will these thoughts will come in and they're able through their discipline their concentration and their practice to, to say okay these are not my thoughts and this is really hard for mediums so this is like some people get mad at mediums or people who are like are prophets and it's tough because the really good people are always just like she was like she was saying you know am i deluding myself the really good people are always saying am i thinking that am i deluded am I, am I delusional am i just want to think that's happening or do i know that's a, a voice telling me something it's very difficult and even even you know even when someone gives you prophecy and like i've had messages in the spirit world and my wife had messages and i can't tell you how many times we read these messages and we think okay that's what it means it didn't mean that at all and then after that we go after the fact something happened we go oh that's what it means it's not easy this is not a perfect science it does happen and that but this difficulty is what makes people think is this me is this it, it's tough so but it takes a lot of practice and you really have to kind of learn that's why if you're a medium or you want to get this i really recommend you read uh alan kardec's the book of mediumship uh you can get that in pdf3 look up alan kardec's uh, space pdf you'll find his spirits book the book of medium uh mediums and then also andre louise uh, in the domains of mediumship or in the realms of mediumship. I can't remember which one. You should read those books and really understand more of the communication. There's, I have a lot of that information too um, from the uh, the books I've written about what Reverend G. Bao and this talk uh, in my, my third book of the series, How Spirits Guide Us, how they communicate with us and how it is quite difficult for them to communicate with us because you know, we are on this different plane and, and and the people who are very, you know, true to themselves really want to make sure that they're not fooling themselves thinking that someone is talking to them when they, they're not. But that's all for us to, to go through gauge those. It's like when we're talking about dreams. I, I recommend people, because dreams mean something. Now, dreams are hard to interpret because we live in this three-dimensional world into this four-dimensional world, right? There's time. Uh, time is a dimension. You can see the past, present, and future of, of things. And, but so we can't, that's why we see crazy symbols in dreams. And that's why I say, you know, and of course they have these whole books about symbols and what they mean, but that's kind of more of a collective misinterpretation of what things could mean. Sometimes they're on and sometimes they're off. It's really what a symbol means to you. More importantly, it's kind of your emotion, how you feel. And some things you can hook up, you know, hook onto, some things you, you really don't understand. So I would say write these things down, keep track of them, and see how they, they work. So it's it's it takes a lot of discipline to really uh, work on your mediumship power and work on interpreting your own dreams. So anyway, I discussed a lot of this in how we are guided by spirits in book three. Okay, let me carry on. So then, not not for long after that, they would allow me to touch her again. But I was often near, and the joy of that one meeting dwelt in our hearts for many an hour. I could see how real had been my kiss to her, and for me it was an anchor of hope, encouraged me to believe that in time I should indeed be able to make her feel my touch and hold communication with her. And this is good for him to, to latch on to this. Of course, if he was a bit of higher spirit, he'd know that her time on, on earth her time on earth would, would come to an end and it would be very over very quickly because you know you're a moral spirit you are there forever you never die as a spirit he was put on earth for a reason to go through trials and so was she and they probably had some sort of past history together 
you'll find that a lot of people, you'll find couples together that are very strange, and then you, you'll, you'll find that a son or a daughter of a couple is was really there because they were a lover of one of them, and now they were made to be a son or daughter so they could learn how to love the mother or father in a brotherly, in a child way, or sometimes you'll have a brother and sister who learn to love each other as a brotherly or sisterly manner. They're, the spirit world does not like unresolved conflicts, and they will try to resolve the conflicts. They don't want people to mad at each other. This is why Jesus said, forgive 70 times seven times, because these things will come from one life to another. If you if you have some big, you know, plot of revenge, or you just hate someone, and and you die still hating that person, well, I got news for you. You're still going to be connected to that person somehow in some manner in a future life. And this is why you need to let go of all that, because these people, um, these people want, you know, these people will go through their own uh, trials and tribulations and they will learn. So anyway, I just want to thank everyone. Now I have a question. And uh, at the end of this meeting, it says, a good, uh, where are you presenting from? So right now I am in the city of Terracina in PYE. It's a state in Brazil. Um, so we're here for a little while, and that's where, where I'm coming from right at this moment. I go to different places, sometimes in the United States, sometimes, you know, wherever um, I'm drawn to right now. And so this is where I'm, I'm from right now. So yeah, I, so I'm on uh, Brazilian time. Right now I'm at like one hour, or I can't remember, two hours of daylight saving times. Brazil kind of changed, so it's kind of different, uh, ahead of uh, Eastern time, of the United States Eastern time. So if there's not any other questions, I want to say God bless everyone. Uh, I want to encourage people to uh, read and study about spiritism. And of course, this is the book you would, would like to start with, the Spirits book. As I said before, you can get all of his books in PDF. That's how I started. I didn't buy anything. Of course, now on my website, nwspiritism.com, you can click on Alan Kardec's picture will take you to a bookstore. You can order it. You also get it through, of course, Amazon on Kindle too. And then I have a book that you can get on my on my site free. It's a PDF. Also have, of course, in Kindle in an audible form in paperback. And um, you can read that book for free. It's PDF. I have other books that, that I've shown you, but those are two. It's absolutely nothing. The more you study Spiritism the more you'll understand yourself. And, and the more you understand yourself and why these things are happening to you, right? That we all think like, oh my God, I'm so unlucky, I'm cursed. Or, you know, this is great, this is gonna last forever, and it doesn't. You'll understand that we're, we're here for the vicissitudes of life, we're here to learn. We're not here to accumulate all sorts of wealth. The, we, the only thing we take back with us to the spirit world where we're immortal souls, we can't die, we don't get, don't get sick, we don't, we're never unemployed, is our character. And that's what we're here for, is to reform our character. Anyway, I want to say thank you and thank you for the people that commented. And you have a wonderful time. God bless.